Hello, my name is Ron Moreira and I will be discussing the development of a robotic manipulator which is intended to study over sensor systems and state estimation. This device is intended to be a teaching aid in a robotics doctoral program. However, it can also be used in other courses to prepare graduate and undergraduate students to real-world contexts. The implementation on the hardware and software levels will be described as well as two approaches for estimating the pose of the manipulator. Taking a look at the implementation of the manipulator, it should be noted that three design criteria were used to keep it cheap and easy to replicate. First, it should be 3D printable, its design and sensors should be low cost, and it must be modular. With these in mind, the manipulator was equipped with three DC motors with warm gearbox and embedded incremental encoders, two 9 degree of freedom inertial measurement units with magnetometers included, two load cells and respective amplifiers to measure the torque in each link, and one Arduino Uno and motor shield for low level operations. On the software level, the control and estimation tasks are separated in two. An Arduino is responsible for low-level control. It reads measurements from sensors and sends them to a personal computer. The PC performs pose estimation and displays sensor readings and the state estimates in a graphical user interface. Then, it sends the desired motor positions to the Arduino. The Arduino receives these and uses them in a PID controller to put the motors in their desired positions. Using this framework, the pose estimation problem has already been thought out. Two approaches have been proposed so far. The first one models the pose of the manipulator as the angles of each joint. If the pose of the base is fixed and known, then the angles of each joint are enough to determine the pose of each individual link. In this model, the measurements taken by the incremental encoders are simply the angular velocities of each joint. For the inertial measurement units, it's not so simple. The measurements that they take relate to the state variables on a recursive level, because each measurement depends on the angles of all the previous joints. This model for the EMU measurements is nonlinear, so the classic Kalman filter can't be used. A nonlinear variant must be used. The extended Kalman filter was considered. However, the partial derivatives of the measurement models are required, and these are long expressions that change with the manipulator's configurations. In order to keep the estimator modular and easy to debug, the unscented Kalman filter was chosen instead of the extended Kalman filter. The second approach for pose estimation defines the pose of the manipulator as the individual orientations of each link. This way, the orientation of the base doesn't need to be considered fixed and can be modeled and estimated as well. For determining the orientation of a rigid body, one of the most effective filters is the multiplicative extended Kalman filter. This filter is usually used for rigid bodies equipped with inertial measurement units. The links that aren't equipped with EMUs can have their orientation determined by the relationship with adjacent links and the angles measured in encoders. With this system implemented, several challenges can be presented to students, creating opportunities to teach about the different aspects of robotic manipulators, as well as software development in an embedded systems context. Some of the different topics that can be explored with this platform are sensor calibration, magnetic interference compensation, controller design, and analysis of the usefulness of different sensors in the state estimation problem.